Welcome to the Gospel Activist Podcast, Ministry of Stepping Out Ministries, where we explore how we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in our modern context. Here is your host, pastor and evangelist, Kevin Henry. Welcome again to the Gospel Activist Podcast. Today on the program, we're looking at relationship versus religion. Which of it is it for Christianity? Is Christianity about a relationship with God, or is it a religion? You may have heard the phrase used of some Christians, Christianity is not a religion, it's about a relationship with God. I've heard that more frequently recently, and throughout my life as a Christian, I have heard this several times, but it seems to be coming in the foreground again talking about, well, it's not a religion, but it's about a relationship with God. And so I've questioned that and wondered, is it true that it's about a relationship with God, or is it a religion? We're going to look at that today in the program. As we continue the program today, I'm going to be sharing some scripture verses regarding this topic. And because I'm going to continue on with them, I encourage you, if you need to just pause the program to look up those passages yourself in your Bible, I welcome to do so. And even check the context, the verses around the verses I use for today. First of all, let's look at the relationship side of this statement. Is this about a relationship with God? To any relationship, there's about six aspects. There may be more, but there's these six for sure that are part of a relationship. And those six things are, first of all, conversation, secondly, time, thirdly, connection, fourth is compassion, acceptance, and forgiveness, fifth is support, and number six is love. Let's look at each of these six and see, do these fit really with a relationship with God? Is our faith about a relationship with God? So now number one again is conversation. Psalms 5 verse 2 says, Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. It's often said of prayer that it is a conversation with God. There's times when we talk to God, and it's a time that we listen to God. Like Mother Teresa, when she was asked about prayer, she was asked, What do you do when you pray? She says she listens to God. Then she was asked, well, what does God do when you pray? Mother Teresa said, he listens too. Well, God does listen to us when we pray, and also when we pray to God, there's times when we need to listen to him too. Prayer really is a dialogue with God, a conversation. That's why you can be driving down the road with your eyes open and talking to God, because you can have a conversation with him. The second one is time. Psalms 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. David here is talking about praising God all the time. And that speaks of having time with God all the time. God is always there with us, and so we can spend time with him all the time. So time is an important aspect of relationship with God, too. If we don't spend time with God in prayer and studying His Word, we're not going to go in our relationship with Him. So we need to spend time with God. Thirdly, connection. Psalm 46, verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. There's that important word there, know. For us to know someone, we have to have a connection with them. Same with God. In order to know Him, we must be connected with Him. Again, that's why conversation and time is important with God. To be talking with God and spending time with Him. If we spend time with Him in His Word and praying to Him, we will develop more of a connection with God. We will more clearly hear His voice, His small, still small voice. Number four is compassion, acceptance, and forgiveness. Is this an aspect of a relationship with God? Colossians 3.13 says, 
bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. We see in this verse here, it's speaking first of all about our relationship with other people, how we're to forgive those who have a complaint against us. And the second part of this verse says, as the Lord has forgiven you. So we do see that forgiveness is a part of our relationship with God. We have done wrong to God. We have sinned against Him. But when we have confessed our sins and placed our faith in Jesus, He has forgiven our sins. As it says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So forgiveness is a part of this. And also acceptance. Because we confess our sins, God forgives us, which means he accepts us. And all this is possible because God had compassion upon us. He saw our state as sinners. And so he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So he felt for us. He had compassion for us. Then he had mercy. He wanted to do something about it. Sending Jesus to die for our sins. So this too is an aspect of our relationship with God. God has compassion upon us. And because he's forgiven us, he accepts us as his children. The fifth aspect of relationship is support. Hebrews 13.5 says, Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Those final words in that verse really does speak to the support that we have in God. Again, those words are this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So God will always be with us. No matter what we face, no matter what trials or tribulations, God is there carrying us through it. And in any work God calls us to do, he supports us in that too. He gives us his power. We know that Jesus says that when he was ascending into heaven, that he would give to us his Holy Spirit. His Spirit to equip us to do the work that he has called us to do. So we have great support from God. The sixth aspect of relationship is love. Well, this is a simple one. We know that because God is love, he has love for us. And that is an as aspect of relationship he has for us. And that we need to have for him too. John fifteen thirteen says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. That truly is the greatest act of love that anyone can do, laying down their life for someone. And as we just said moments ago, that's exactly what Jesus did. He laid his life down for us. He went to the cross and died for our sins. And then three days later rose from the dead to offer us the gift of salvation. What a great act of love. In response to that, we too need to love God. And we need to support the Lord in the work he has called us to do. That's being obedient to evangelizing the lost and discipling our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We don't need to forgive God for anything because we're the ones who've done wrong to him. But we do accept his gift of salvation. Also, as we seek to connect with God, spending time with him and conversing in prayer, we also are fulfilling that same side of the aspects of relationship. So these six aspects of relationships, we see that God fulfills that, and we also fulfill that. There is a relationship with God. That is a part of Christianity. So, again, is Christianity about a relationship or about religion? The first part of that question is, yes, it is a relationship with God. But we should still examine the other side of that question. Is Christianity a religion? You know, the term religion often has been used in a bad way, or thought of in a bad way. We especially look at the Middle East with ISIS and what's happening there, a lot of Christians being slaughtered by, by some of the Muslims there. We also see a lot of other travesties done in the name of religion or a name 
in the name of a god. So religion really does have a bad name. But let's look at the definition of religion. What does the word religion actually mean? Here's a couple of definitions from dictionary.com. The first is a set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe, especially when considering as the creation of a superhuman agency or agencies, usually involving devotional and ritual observances, and often containing a moral code governing the conduct of human affairs. The second definition is this, something one believes in and follows devotedly, a point or matter of ethics or conscience. While looking at these two definitions, we see that religion isn't necessarily a bad thing. Let's compare Christianity to this definition of religion a moment. Again, in the first definition, a set of beliefs concerning the cause, nature, and purpose of the universe. We definitely see that in the book of Genesis. We do have a belief of how the universe came to be and how the universe works. I like to say that the Bible proves science, not science proves the Bible. Because God's word told us how he created the universe. And as we study science, we understand what God describes of how things came into order. That's how this universe works. Continuing now in the definition, especially when considered as a creation of a superhuman agency or agencies. Well, we as Christians do believe that God created this universe. That God being a supernatural being, he created the universe. The third part of that first definition, usually involving devotional and ritual observances. We do that as Christians as well. We do have devotional, we do take times of devotion for the Lord. And we do have ritual observances. For instance, Sundays, we have a time as the church to come together and to worship God. Part of that worship service may involve singing. It probably would involve giving our tithes and offerings and hearing a message preached from the pastor. Then the last part of this first definition, and often containing a moral code governing the conduct of human affairs. We do see that too in our faith. The Ten Commandments really is the moral code God has given us for how we as Christians, those things are repeated in the New Testament. Paul, through many of his letters, and Jesus connects with the Ten Commandments. So we do have a moral code which we use to govern our lives. So based on this first definition, Christianity is a religion. Let's now look at the second definition. Something one believes in and follows devotedly. Well, we, as Christians too, if we truly love God, we believe what His Word says, and we do follow God. We are to love Him, as God's Word says, to love Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So we believe in God, and we're devoted to Him. The last part of that definition, a point or matter of ethics or conscience. Well, again, God's Word speaks to us to a point or matter of ethics. Again, the moral code. And it speaks to our conscience. God again says in His Word that He has written His laws in our heart. That's what we call a conscience. So we know right from wrong. So based on both of these definitions of religion, Christianity is also a religion. As we mentioned earlier, Sometimes the term religion is looked at as a derogatory term, something that isn't good. That's why a lot of Christians say that it's a relationship and not a religion. But is there possible for it to be for there to be good or bad religion? Well, the Bible actually speaks to that very issue. Colossians two verse twenty three says, These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. The context of this verse is dealing in regards to different aspects, for instance, food. There are certain regulations that are put upon us at times. The world looks at it and says, well, we shouldn't eat this, or we shouldn't do that. It's not good for us. But yet, 
in our faith as Christians, it gives us freedom to partake of some of those things. In our day and age, there's the great diet phenomenon. There's always the pressure for those of us who are a little heavier in weight to try to lose that weight, which probably is a good thing, but they keep on saying what we should and shouldn't eat, what kind of exercises we should do. But when it comes down to these things, God even says in his word that all food is good. All the natural food that God has given us is good for us. So vegetables, fruits, even meats are good for us. These are things that God has given us. Now, we do need to be careful in how much we eat. Just like any good thing, it's good in proportion. But this verse then speaks mainly about how it's a self-made religion when it's contrary to God's word. What's steering away from the freedom Christ has given us. So that really is then a bad religion. Because it's not following God in his directions. A second verse is James 1 verse 26 and 27. Where it says, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. The Apostle James here is actually dealing with that whole question of good versus bad religion. In verse 26, he defines what bad religion is. And again, verse 26, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's man, this person's religion is worthless. So bad religion is when we don't bridle our tongue. When we're not careful with the words we use. If we use words to tear down, that's bad religion. If we use good, encouraging words to build up, to point people to Christ and live for Him, that's good religion. It is no wonder that we use relationship rather than religion to describe Christianity when there's so many Christians out there who don't really act like Christians. There are many Christians who are gossips. God's Word tells us that God hates gossip. It doesn't build up people, it tears them down. When we act immorally as Christians, it doesn't show well for us. Our religion is bad then. So again, it's no wonder that there's so many out there as Christians who say it's about a relationship and not a religion. Plus, there's the whole aspect of saying, well, Christianity has done some pretty awful things in the past, like the Crusades. That's a whole other subject for another time. We as Christians need to act like how Christians are supposed to act. Then verse 27, again, the positive side. Here's what good religion is. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. This is speaking of good in doing good deeds. It is good for us to do good deeds, to visit those who are orphans and widows, to help in them in their troubles. That shows that we love them and care for them. It also shows that we are acting upon what we believe. If we believe that God loves us and died for us, and if we believe that is good news, we're going to do whatever we can to reach all those who are lost. Like the Apostle Paul says, to become all things for all people so that he might win some. We too need to do what we can, be all things to all people, so we might reach some. So, it is fine and good for us to do acts of service because it will give us an opportunity to share the gospel because they'll see there's something different about us. They, they'll they see that we genuinely care for them. So we'll open up the door for us to share the gospel with them. The second part of verse 27, and to keep oneself unstained from the world, that is to live morally and right, to be holy and righteous before God. When people see us as Christians living a moral life, they then see that there's something different about us. There's been a sad phenomenon in the church that has happened in the last 20 or 30 years. Some Christians that don't act like Christians. Some who live together for a time. 
some Christians who have had sexual relations outside of marriage, either before marriage or during marriage. Uh, even the thought of some of the televangelists that are out there who have been caught in adulterous affairs. These are all things that stain us. And James is telling us here, we're to keep away from those things, to be unstained from the world. Again, to live holy lives. We as Christians need to live moral lives. If we truly are a Christian, we need to allow God to make the change in us. To change our desires from that of the world, from that of sinful and immoral things, to the things of God. We as Christians really are without excuse. God has given us the power and authority over temptation and sin. So we can overcome any temptation. So we need to live in that way. I do hear from many unbelievers that do say, well, Christianity doesn't make a difference because they don't live any different. It's a really sad testimony for us as Christians. If we truly are a Christian and we truly believe the gospel message, our actions must change. Because again, God has given us the power and authority to do so. That is good religion. When we do the works of service, because we love people, because we love God, and when we live righteous and holy lives, that is good religion. So then is Christianity a religion? Based on James 1.26, and this definition we've looked at for religion. Christianity is religion. So let's put this all together here. Again, is Christianity about a relationship with God or is it a religion? I think it's both. We need to refrain as Christians from saying that Christianity is about a relationship and not a religion. When we see a statement like that, we're lying to the world. Here's rather should be our response. Christianity is a relational religion where to be a Christian is to accept God's free gift of salvation in order to have a relationship with Him. Our faith then requires relationship with others since we are a part of a church and are called to evangelize the lost. Thus, Christianity is a religion that is about a relationship with God. It's both. Christianity is a religion about a relationship with the God, the creator of the universe. The one who desired relationships with us and loved us so much that he thought of us and created us. What an amazing and awesome thing to know that there is a God who existed to create us. What a wonderful message that we as Christians have to give. May we as Christians be devoted to God in loving Him and knowing Him, and then loving Him by serving Him, sharing this wonderful, gracious, and awesome news that there's a God who loves them. May we be faithful to that call, loving God and loving others. Well, thank you again for joining us on the program today. In our next episode, we'll be answering the justice question. Is God just? And what is the means of justice? Until next time, this is Pastor Kevin reminding you to preach the gospel to any person, anywhere, anytime, and no matter the cost. You have been listening to the Gospel Activist Podcast, a ministry of Stepping Out Ministries. To submit a question for Pastor Kevin to answer on the podcast, visit us at www.steppingoutministries.com slash podcast.html. Thank you for listening, and we invite you to join us for our next podcast.